I'm Chris Burns and welcome to iTalk. Some call it the strip mining of the seas, overfishing that is wiping out fish stocks, sometimes to the point of near extinction. And what about the safety and quality of the fish we eat? Well, joining us to take your questions is Maria Damanaki, EU Commissioner for Maritime Affairs and Fishing. Commissioner, before we get to that, uh, why don't I ask you first, though, about your home country, Greece. This could be a whole, a whole story, a whole show, <laughs> but what is your prognosis, positive, negative, of the economic situation there? Well, we can be slightly optimistic now. We have gone through very, very hard years, three or four very, very hard years. Um, cuts on wages, on pensions, 30%, uh, almost 30% unemployment. This is really a disaster. Exactly. Some people say this to the breaking point socially, but Absolutely. you're still optimistic. Yes, I, I think. I'm still optimistic. Why? Because we can see a slight uh, light now at the end of the tunnel. For the first time, Greece has a surplus and uh, there are some reforms ongoing and um, we are expecting um, some tourists, a lot of tourism, actually, this uh, summer. So if we are going uh, this way, I think uh, that at the end we are going to earn the game. But the difficulties are still there. Exactly. We still have to keep our fingers crossed. <laughs> let's, uh, let's go quickly to the questions now. This one uh, from a group called Fish Fight. Hola, soy Mario Picasso. Hello, my name is Mario Picasso. In Fish Fight, we are fighting to forbid fish discards, and there are more than 850,000 people who support our cause. The last obstacle in the common fishery policy reform is the position of some member states like Spain, France or Ireland. The Commission and the Parliament support us. But the question is, what is going to happen now that the negotiations include fishery ministers? Thank you very much. Okay, Commissioner, this is the trilogue now, right? <laughs> yes. This is where more cooks are in the pot, are stirring the pot. What's going to happen now? Well, I, I, I'm, I'm optimistic. I have to say that because... Uh, They're not the, going to water it down? Well, there is a possibility of watering down. If we are going through a negotiation, a compromise is there. So perhaps there are some possibilities for the watering down. But I'm optimistic because uh, of this of all these people, eh? because, uh, you because have heard, pressure from yes, groups like those. Yes, we have heard uh, almost a million of signatures for this. So about discarding, this is a huge problem now, 23%, this is an average figure, of our fish is uh, throwing, the, our fishermen throw it back to the sea, 23%, and in some fisheries it's up to 80%. Oh, that's huge. It, it's huge. So I think that everybody now has understood that, and um, we had uh, a good approach in the council between the ministers. Um, no exceptions, which is very important, but of course the timeline is still at stake. Okay. Let's go to a fisherman, see what okay. he has to say, ask you. Je m'appelle my name is Klipa Petru, I come from Romania. I'm a fisherman, and I'd like to ask a question to Ms. Damanaki. Why does Europe allow high levels of fishing when we all know that there are not many fish left? Well, that's a good, straight question. What do you think? We are trying, this is the answer, but we are not there yet. So what we have to do, and this is uh, what our, our reform is about, we have um, uh, to be sure that what we are going to remove from the sea is uh, the good quantity that can leave our stocks in a good health in order to get reproduced. This is what we call maximum sustainable yield. So I can say that if our reform will be in place, then we can have a very good prognosis because after 2022, Almost all stocks are going to be fished in a sustainable way, and this means that we're going to have almost 30% more jobs in the fishery sector, and we can have also 24 additional income, 24% for our fishermen. Because that's another danger with overfishing, is you're, you're making jobs extinct as well. So well, yes, we have to keep the balance. We well, the th balance. this is what I'm saying about my job. My job is yeah. just to keep the balance between the social consequences and uh, what we can do about ourselves. And then what about balancing all this with the quality of the fish we eat? Here's the next question on that. Bonjour, Nicolas. Good morning. My name is Nicolas. And I'm French. I would like to ask a question to the Commissioner in charge of Maritime Affairs and Fisheries. I'd like to know what the Commission does to ensure our health when it comes to what is on our plates, especially when it's fish. Okay, that's also a concern. 
Yes. And it's a very serious concern because uh, we have to depend on our imports. Um, 63, 64 percent of the fish uh, which end us ends up uh, on our plates. And how much it, of that is checked? Well, uh, we have some checks, yes, but we cannot check every mm -hmm. fish. Uh, and you can imagine millions of tons fishing coming, fish comes from other regions. So, so, so are you getting tougher on that? Yes, we are getting tougher because we really need uh, to control situation. So we have a lot of instruments in our hands now, uh, legal instruments, and also we can go and even stop imports. This is uh, the last, the last uh, um, punishment, let me put it. But we can even stop imports from some um, country, from some vessels, if we are not sure that they are fished in a legal way. Another related question on, on quality, this from a group called Slow Food, where I'll know that group, or a lot of mm. us do. And Here's what they say. My name is Michelle Mesmain. I coordinate the Slow Fish campaign for Slow Food. On behalf of our network, I would like to ask Commissioner Damanaki how we can use our oceans better while preserving their integrity if we continue to manage fisheries with a stock-by-stock -stock approach when interaction among the whole traffic chain and with the environment is so much more complex and promote agriculture, which is a little bit like wanting to take care of a forest by putting farms in it. Well, that's an interesting analogy. What do you think about that? <laughs> they know the game. Mm. So labeling is my first answer. We need labeling, good labeling. And that's why I have a proposal, which is still on the table. Unfortunately, the council has not agreed and the parliament is rather reluctant, but I hope I'm going to get it through. So my idea is that every fish, every fish at every supermarket throughout Europe will have a label saying if it is fresh or defrosted and when it was fished. And then we also need to take care of aquaculture because aquaculture can be an alternative to overfishing. Right. Since we cannot... Uh, but it has eat, to be done right. Yes, it has to be done. So our new financial instrument is going to ring fence some money, especially for aquaculture, aquaculture in sea, but also in fresh water. So all the countries, all the member states, even the landlocked countries are now interested about having aquaculture projects and try to produce fish. Okay, I'm going to try to fit in these last questions if we can. This one from uh, Greenpeace about quotas. Hi, my name is Saskia. I'm from Germany, but I work here in Brussels. The Commission identified excessive fishing capacity as a key driver for overfishing in Europe. Now that the Commission's proposal to cut overcapacity by a quota trading system is off the table, what solutions will you be looking for in the CFP reform to cut overcapacity? How are you going to do that? I have to be sincere. This will be very difficult. But what we can do is um, to launch uh, this idea of conditionality, referring uh, to the money we are giving to our uh, member states. So we have a fund. It's taxpayers' money, of course. So we have to have some strict rules saying in a very concrete way that the member states cannot get enough money from this pot, let me put it this way, if they are not going to reduce overcapacity. we got one final question about sustainable fishing. Have a look. I'm Lorena Stoica from Romania and uh, I want to ask you about sustainable fishing. Um, why uh, the European allow fishing on a high scale when this is not sustainable? And what do you want to do uh, in this way, Mrs. Uh, Damanaki? What we are going to do is to turn up the way we are going to give money now. We are going to give more money to small-scale vessels. We are going uh, to enhance these people, local communities, local fishermen. Uh, also, we are going to give them money in order to um, revitalize the local economies, the spouses, uh, to cook the fish, to process the fish. This is the only way to try to enhance small-scale vessels through and local economies through a positive way. And of course, we have to limit a little the way our huge vessels, huge trawlers are fishing. It's all about balancing all those interests. Okay. Thanks very much, Commissioner, for tackling these questions and glad you could join us on iTalk. I'm Chris Burns and until next time, thanks for watching.